I'm Ranger Marilyn, and welcome to Oxen Cove Park and Mount Welby, the oldest structure in the park today. You are about to meet Matilda, a woman enslaved on the Mount Welby property during the early part of the 19th century. The story that you're about to see is a fictional one based on primary source documents and local slave narratives. There you go. Well, come on, you might as well walk with me while I tend to my work. Mistress de Butts don't like her slaves sitting around idle. Well, Master John Henry, he's better than most of the masters on the other farms, but he don't like no wool gathering either. You know, my mama, she, she taught me how to quilt. I remember she would sit right there in that chair, looking out that window, singing her favorite song. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. You know, Mama told me that Mistress said that when she died, she would put in her will that Mama and I be set free. But then came that dreadful sickness over the farm. Mama died that winter because of that sickness. Mama used to take care of the main house and, and also the personal needs of the mistress. So I would, well, I'd watch her, watched everything she did, so I was able to take over her responsibilities. I would sit there as a youngin and listening to all the stories Mama used to tell about before she come to this place, stories her mama told her, her mama's mama told her. Well, come on, you better wrap up some, because it's, it's chilly out there. We've had a hard winter this year. You know, there's still some mornings when I look out at that water, I remember back to the war. That was the, the summer before Master de Butts died in 1814. <laughs> oh, we could hear the, the fine of, the, of them cannons and, and them rockets fine. You know, they, they found three of them rockets over there on the hill. Oh, we could smell the smoke from the cannon guns as they were firing on the, on the forts and the bridges. Lord have mercy, there were times when them cannons fired, we could feel the, the house shake. <laughs> oh, there were times when, look, 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 right over there. That's where the British fleet was, right over there. There was a time when the mistress wanted to go down to to Loudoun County to see her daughter who'd taken sick. And Mr. Delaney, her husband, well, he went off to fight the enemy. But she knew better than to take the, the carriage because then the, the British would, would take it and they'd use it for day service. <sighs> Come on. Let's go on down to the root cellar. I'm going to get some yams and make some yam pudding.
might as well wait right here. Rachel said she was going to lay the yams out on the table, so I'll just gather them up and be right on out. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think that yam pudding is going to be the perfect thing to take into town. <laughs> Whew. Now we got to go over to the stables and, and see if Mr. Paul has got the carriage ready for the mistress. Mr. Paul? Mr. Paul, you in there? Did I ever tell you that Mr. Paul is a free man? <laughs> oh, yeah. Mr. Paul? You in here? Miss Paul. Oh yeah. He was freed years ago when the master and the mistress lived up in Washington County. And then when it came down here, he's been working with the family ever since. I remember asking Paul what it felt like to be free. He told me that, well, you may not be able to, to see it on the outside, but it sure felt good on the inside. But you know, I can see it on the outside. The way he holds his head up high. The, the look of purpose in his eyes. Yeah, I can see the free man in him. <laughs> oh, there you go, Mr. Paul. Now, girl, I want you to remember these stories that I tell you. See, I, I may not ever be able to, to write them down, but I can pass them down through you. So you go on up to the house and you tell the mistress that the, the carriage be ready in just a few, just a little while. Paul. The story of Matilda that you have just seen is only an interpretation of what life was like for this woman who lived her life in bondage here on the Mount Welby property. The story was created using slave narratives and primary source documents from the Mount Welby period of the park's history. These primary source records are written from the perspective of white society. In fact, the only reference we have of Matilda is a few chilling words taken from her owner's property list. Patsy and Matilda value $350. Now that you have experienced Matilda's story, it's time for you to create your own.